Let's talk a bit about the alpha parameter. So we have to calculate the alpha parameter during the iteration and alpha is equals to 1 divided by 2 times the logarithm of 1 minus the error term divided by the error term. And if we take a closer look at this plot where we have the error rate and the alpha value, we can see that if the error rate is smaller than 0.5, what does it mean? That it is a better classifier than a coin flip, so a random guess basically. So a given Ajax classifier alpha value increases as the error converges to zero. Of course, good classifiers are given more weight. So this is what we have been talking about that the alpha value controls the given age x weak learner. If alpha is zero, it means that we do not care about that given learner. If the value of alpha is great, for example, plus one, plus two, plus three, or something like this, it means that we give more weight to this given learner. Okay, so here in this region where the error rate is small, the alpha value is going to be plus one, plus two, and so on. So we would like to give more weight to a classifier with small error rate. If the error rate is 0 0.5, then the alpha value of that given Ajax classifier is zero. You may pose the question why? Because it is a random guess, basically a coin flip. So if the error rate is 0 0.5, it is a coin flip and we don't want our algorithm to rely on random guesses. So we are not going to bother with classifier with error rate 0 0.5. We don't want to deal with random guesses. And if the error rate is greater than 0 0.5, as you can see the alpha value will be smaller than 0. What does it mean? That basically we do the opposite because that's the best action we can make. If we have a classifier with, for example, 90% error rate, what does it mean? That with 90% probability, the classifier is going to make bad decisions. Of course, if we do the opposite, it means that the opposite of the classifier will make good decisions with 90% accuracy. So, of course, if the error rate is greater than 0 0.5, the alpha has to be smaller than 0. So, we would like to make opposite actions. So, basically, this is why we have to calculate alpha with the help of this formula. Because this formula makes sure that if we are dealing with an Ajax classifier with error rate smaller than 0 0.5, alpha is going to be greater than zero, which means that good classifiers are given more weight. If the error rate is 0 0.5, we don't want to bother about that classifier. So the alpha value is going to be zero. And if the error rate is greater than 0 0.5, it means that the best action is to do the opposite. So that's why the alpha value will be smaller than zero. Okay, so this is why we have been discussing in the previous lecture that the alpha parameter is going to control the age x weak learners. So alpha has something to do with the weak learners. Okay, what about the weights? We are going to assign a given w weight to every single sample in the data set. And of course, in every iteration, we have to update the weights associated to every single sample. And this is the formula we have to use. The weight in the next iteration is equals to the weight in the previous iteration divided by z times an exponential function. So e to the power of minus alpha times h times y. So this is how we update the weights in every iteration. The w weights has something to do with the data set samples, okay? We set higher weights to more important samples and lower weight values to less important one. This is what we have been discussing as well, that if we have a weak learner with some misclassified samples, 
Of course, in the next iteration, we would like to focus on the misclassified items. So we don't want to bother about the correctly classified items. That's why we are going to decrease the weights for the correctly classified items. And we are going to increase the weights for the misclassified items. This is how the algorithm knows that, okay, in the next iteration, we have to deal with these values. We have to come up with a classification algorithm that's able to classify correctly these data samples. By the way, this Z makes sure that the W is a distribution. This is what we have been discussing, that the sum of the W sub i weights must be equals to 1. And that's why we have this normalization factor. Then we have this YX function, which is basically flips the sign of the exponent if HX is wrong. So we have to make sure that if the given sample was misclassified, then we have to increase increase the weights. And if the given sample with index i was classified correctly, we have to decrease the weight. And basically this is why we have this y function. If hx weak learner has managed to classify the given sample with index i correctly, we have to make sure that the weight is going to be decreased. So we have to make sure that the exponent will be smaller than zero. So if Ajax made a good decision, then Y is going to be plus one. If Ajax made a bad decision, then Yx is going to be minus one. This is how it is going to flip the sign of the exponent. Why is it good? Because it makes sure to assign smaller weights to samples that are correctly classified and bigger weights for misclassification. So in the next iteration, the Ajax learner can focus on those samples with higher weights. Okay, so this Y function makes sure that the weights are going to be updated correctly. And you may pose the question that why do we have to include the alpha in the exponent? Because this is how we make sure that stronger classifiers' decisions are more important. So if a weak classifier misclassifies an input, we do not take that as seriously as a strong classifier's mistake. You may pose the question that why? Because if the alpha value is high, it means that the error rate is low. What does it mean? That it is a strong classifier. And this is how we make sure that a strong classifier's decision are more important because we multiply the exponent by alpha. Okay, so if a weak classifier where the alpha is approximately zero, as you can see, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, this is a weak classifier error rate. In this case, we do not take it as seriously as a strong classifier's mistake. So this is why we have to include the alpha in the exponent as well. So this is how we can update the W weight values. This is how we can update the alpha values. And basically we just have to use this iterative approach in order to get the HX weak learners. And with the combination of these weak classifiers or weak learners, we are able to end up with a strong classifier that's able to make good predictions. For example, here it is able to solve this non-linearly separable problem. We just have to combine three linear classifiers. This classifier, this classifier, and this classifier. So this is how boosting works. Thanks for watching.